All right, hey, what's up guys? It's Jim Bob, and I'm here to do a quick little walk around of my van, and this is actually my second time doing this. I recorded it before, and for some reason, my camera crashed, and the card was completely corrupted. I've never had that happen before, and I've been shooting on Canon cameras for over 20 years, so that was a big bummer. Um, so I'm feeling a little less motivated to do it today, but I definitely wanna get this done. I realized after my last video on the van where I got the high roof installed, I didn't really show the inside and I was kind of waiting to do like a full walk around video. I was waiting for the inside to be done. I wanted the electrical system in and that's just kind of on hold right now. Um, one thing that's been going on is my wife and I had to move temporarily because the sewer line in our building is falling apart and so we're moving out for eight weeks. So we've been busy doing that. And as you can see, the weather has not been good. Uh, so we haven't been camping. And I really wanted to do this walk around while I was camping. So I would have everything all set up, but I also just want to get a video out and kind of show everything that's going on in the van currently and how we use it. And I think one important thing to talk about is the fact that this is not like your typical van life build. We are not like quote unquote van life people. We don't need a ton. Uh, we would like to build out the interior of the van and that is a plan. I actually have um, all the insulation in my shipping container right here. But until I have a place that I can actually work on the van, um, I'm just not gonna do that yet. And we don't really need it. We live in Southern California and building out the entire inside is just not a priority right now. So. I'm gonna show you how we use the van currently and why it works for us. And I think a big thing I wanna talk about is just doing a budget van build. I think that's been my whole thing with these Econoline vans. You know, a lot of people talk about Sprinters and Transits and Promasters, and those are all good vans, don't get me wrong. But Ford made millions of these things and you can get them for as cheap as $2,000. So I really, really think that the Ford Econoline is a great, platform for an off-roader for a van life kind of van or just as like a mountain bike shuttle van and we use that to do all of those things so it's kind of like a swiss army build and that's what i love about the econoline you know you don't have to spend all the money to get a sprinter van you know you can buy one of these things for super cheap get a high top from wasatch overland like we did and you get six and a half feet of standing room but with the Econoline, it's more truck based. So you can actually run 35 inch tires, have lockers, 12 inches of wheel travel. So you can still off road and still have plenty of standing room on the inside. So that's kind of my whole spiel for the Econoline. And uh, I'm gonna kind of walk around and show you some of the things that I've done to it and how we use it. So I'm gonna just start at the front of the van. Uh, there's a couple things I don't think any of you have seen because I haven't done a video since putting this stuff on, but I did switch back to the black cargo headlight bezels and got some Phillips just standard square headlights, but they're LED and they're super bright. They're totally bolt in, uh, plug and play. You don't have to do anything, no modifications. And the rest is all kind of light stuff as well. I've got uh, Baja Design Squadron Pros on some Vantage Optics mounts uh, as ditch lights. And those Vantage Optics mounts are awesome. I have no affiliation with the company. I've just bought those and they make a lot of cool products. They actually make a product that fixed the AC in this van. When we first got it, the AC didn't work. It, it would stop blowing cold if it was under load, so like going up a hill, and uh, it's some sort of vacuum pump thing or vacuum line thing. And Vantage Optics makes like a $30 fix, and it completely fixed our AC. So shout out to them. I'll put a link to some of that stuff. And then we also have a 30-inch Baja Designs Onyx 6 light bar, which anyone that's ever seen one of these things, it's, uh, it's pretty unreal. It turns night to day, and uh, that's all controlled through the six-switch S-Pod that if you watch my electrical system video, I did a thing on that and I'll, I'll show it in this as well. And we're actually gonna have two S pods in this van. Again, I covered that in the electrical system video. So go to my profile and look for that if you wanna find out more. But we have a six switch S pod on a U-joint bracket um, with the U-joint uh, switch mount inside. And 
that's kind of controlling all the off-road stuff, off-road lights, and it's going to control a compressor and a few other things. And then we're also going to be running an eight switch S-Pod Bantam on the inside. And that's going to control all the house lights, the fan, the fridge, all that good stuff. So I'm going to do more on that once I actually get that installed. And a quick note on that, I also have three 100 watt obsidian panels from Zamp Solar that I'm just waiting to put on. Um, the weather's been so wet and bad that I haven't been able to epoxy them to the top. So I'm going to do a whole video on that and look for that coming soon. And so obviously one of the things everybody loves about this van are the 35 inch tires and the lift. And I think if you're watching this video, you've probably seen my lift video. But if not, go back and check that out. Um, this is a Weld Tech Designs Baja Grocery Gooder Kit, and it's the complete package. So it's got the progressive leaf springs in the rear, along with the entire front end, which has you know the modified and extended radius arms and the modified I-beams, springs, Fox shocks, all that good stuff. And you know, I got a lot of comments on that lift video about like, okay, who cares? You lifted the van. This doubles the wheel travel. It doubles the wheel travel of even my Quigley 4x4 van that I had. So that is insane. This makes the van drive so well off-road, but it also fixes how they drive on-road. I don't know if anyone's driven a Ford Econoline for an extended amount of time, but they are not amazing. They're not super comfortable. They kind of wander around the road. I know some people say they don't, but they do. And this kit completely changed all that. So this is the main thing I would say if you've got a Ford Econoline and you want to go off-road, consider getting a Weld Tech kit. And they, they make other ones. They don't make just a 5-inch lift. They make a 3-inch, and they also make lifts for Chevy vans, Ford Transits, etc. So um, I'll put a link to Weld Tech's site, and you can go check out what they have. They've got bumpers, sliders, wheels, all kinds of stuff. So... Um, highly recommend checking that out. Easily the biggest difference, you know, that we have done to this van was this kit. So again, I can't say enough about it. The Fox shocks are awesome. And it's just a beast on and off road. And then, you know, I do get a lot of questions about these wheels. They're just standard steely wheels. They're called D window steelies. And I think I got them from BB wheels or something. They're 17 by nine inch. And I've got 35 by 12 and a half by 17 BF Goodrich KO2s on it right now. That's one of the things with the kit. You know, it's very easy. You just kind of weld these radius bracket arms forward, do a little trimming on the front fenders and on the bumper, and you can run 35s. So another point against a sprinter kind of van, uh, you're not running 35s and getting 12 inches of wheel travel. And aside from the 35 inch tires and the lift, uh, it also has 456 gears to go with those tires along with the power tracks no slip locker and i'm gonna do an entire video on the locker and what it's like driving one of these vans on road and off road with a full-time mechanically locked rear end it does uh, disengage if you're off power going around a turn uh, it'll let the inside tire rotate less than the outside tire and from my perspective this is the best option for these vans. If you live in a place that doesn't snow or I don't know, like for me, we've had torrential rain the last few weeks and I've had no issues. I think this mechanical locker is awesome. If you can afford or want a selectable locker, that's just as well. And I'm just offering this up as a $400 option as opposed to at a minimum, you know, 1200 bucks plus you got to install it. So you can install one of these lunchbox lockers in your driveway. It takes, I don't know, an hour or two. Very, very easy. And the 456 gears are perfect. So I think before I maybe got a little bit better gas mileage, but I'm currently averaging between 15 and 17 miles per gallon uh, over an entire tank. And the 456 gears keep it at about, I think, 2200 rpm around 65 and you know 2300 or so if you're going 70 i don't drive faster than 70 this fan has the 4.6 and it's going nowhere fast so i think that maybe part of the reason i get better gas mileage is the 4.6 i think it's slightly more efficient than some of the other motors and 
that's sort of another thing I wanted to talk about is with these vans, you have so many options on motors. You can get diesel ones. You, there's like three different gas versions that you can get. So, you know, depending on what you want to do, if you want to tow, you can get a diesel one. You know, the, the 5.4 that I had in my Quigley 4x4, you know, that was, a, that was a good motor too. But, you know, I do think the 4.6 should not be written off. When I first got the van, I was kind of bummed because I was like, ah, I wanted the 5.4, but at the end of the day, this has been just as good. So I wouldn't write it off. Uh, these are significantly cheaper than the 5.4s or the V10s. So definitely recommend checking it out. Um, there's no reason to skip skip the 4.6 unless you plan on doing towing or really, really building these things out. If you're gonna weigh it down a ton, yeah, maybe the 4.6 isn't for you, but back to the original point, I think the 456 gears with the 35s is perfect. And, you know, another good thing about these vans is they have a Dana 60 rear end. That's a, that's a full one ton axle and, you know, it can actually go off road. I'm not going to say you can't off road sprinters or transits or whatnot, but you cannot build them out to go off road like you can an Econoline. And that's even if you want a four by four it later, you know? It's these things, four wheel drive on 37 inch tires, you know, from like U-joint or something, insane. So, you know, you can always start out uh, building one like this and, you know, you can keep saving money. And later on, if you want a four by four, you're gonna have like a monster truck van, which is always cool. Okay, we can't talk about this van without talking about the top. Um, I also have another full video on that and getting that installed by Wasatch Overland, but you know, this was the game changer. Before it was a lifted, cool off-road van, but I do use it as like a mountain bike kind of home base when I go riding, when I race, etc. And you know, it's got six and a half feet of standing room in it. And it's just a game changer. And they're about, you know, six thousand, sixty five hundred dollars installed. But if you're buying a van for two thousand, five thousand, you know, ten thousand dollars and you put this on it, you know, you've got a pretty sweet, capable van where you can get parts anywhere in the country for it. And you can still stand up in it. And one of the plus sides, I guess, to like a sprinter style van is you do have a full length door on these vans. You know, you don't, even with the top. So you do have to kind of duck under it, but that, that has not been a problem for me at all. I know a lot of people kind of say that, like, oh, you have to duck to get into it, but who cares? It's not that bad. And one of the other things that I got when I was at Wasatch Overland was this awning. And this awning isn't anything special. It's just a generic, whatever, I don't know, six, eight foot um, awning. But the Wasatch Overland awning mounts are awesome. And I know there's a few other companies that make them, but Wasatch is actually works with a slider. And that's something I haven't seen other ones do. So, you know, for relatively cheap, you can, you can mount a pretty big awning on here and real quick on the slider door I did have to get a door extension and I got it from my buddy Dallas uh, thank you again for that he makes them and I can put a link to where you can buy one from him uh, Welltech also makes one but uh, to clear the tires you do have to put an extension and actually I'm gonna have to modify my door slightly if I keep these wheels uh, the offset is just so aggressive with how wide the tires are that it does still hit a little bit and I don't really want to get new wheels. I really like these wheels. So yeah, that's one thing to note. If you are going to put big 35s and these crazy offset wheels, uh, even with a door extension, you may still have to modify your door. And coming around to the back, uh, there's a couple things I want to highlight. I do have this Kelty trash bag on my spare tire. Uh, I really like that. Uh, there's other products that do it. The Kelty one has worked really well for me. And I also have a Rig Supply Ultra Swing, and I've got a flip down table with it. And the Ultra Swing is awesome. I, I really want to do a full video on this because not everybody knows about these, but if you off road your vehicle, there's no better swing out that can just, or I should say, hitch mounted swing out. There's others out in the market. None of them are as good as this. It's made in the USA. And I've got the Rig Ramble Rack bike rack on here, which again, I made a video on it. You should check it out. I think it's the best bike rack for anyone that has a truck or an off-road vehicle or if you take bikes camping i've had toolies i've had one-ups nothing compares to this so 
I'm gonna show you a little bit about this and uh, how it works and you can kind of see some of the features. All right, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and kind of show you guys the back of the van and how I have it set up. As you can see, we've got some magnetic uh, window covers. They're insulated. I got them on eBay. Uh, they were cheap, but they work really well. And yeah, let's kind of get into it. And again, the van is not built out. Uh, I do want to use these as storage at some point. Um, I don't know if we'll end up like kind of cutting this out to make like a big pouch, but you know, maybe we'll do another flip down table to kind of go along with the rigged one and you know, keep this one as storage or something. But this is all just kind of whatever. Um, I do have a Zamp Obsidian portable. Uh, solar panel that I use when camping and in, you know, in conjunction with the PLB, it just works awesome. So this has been a great addition. And, you know, we got some real basic off-road stuff. We've got recovery boards. These are uh, crucial if you have a two wheel drive van. I think anyone knows that. And you got a table, got a safe jack and a compressor. I've got my Devos outdoor camp lights, which are incredible. Um, I'll try to put a link for those. If you're looking for a really cool um, rechargeable camp light, and it actually has a solar panel, so you can charge it during the day. Um, these are awesome. I, I really like these, so big fan. And in the pack out box, I keep all of my power tools. So angle grinder, drill, impacts, all that kind of stuff. We got the Kelty chair and back, let's see if you can see in there. We got one of those yellow top boxes and that's full of more recovery gear and tools. And then behind the compressor in this big Rubbermaid thing, that's all of our camp kitchen stuff. So that's got our stove, pots, pans, all that kind of stuff. So just, you know, move the compressor, slide this out. It can act as a chair, as a table, whatever. And we typically just, you know, put, put our stove here and cook here. Sweet cutting board. Big fan of that. So, you know, kind of do all of our cooking and everything back here. The bed's right there. I think one thing I would like to do is add some netting, uh, like a magnetic uh, bug net thing there. I've seen a couple online, but they want like $800 for it, and uh, I'm not willing to do that. So may end up just making one. All right, now let's take a quick look inside. Uh, nobody's really seen the inside yet. So uh, let's do a little walkthrough. Quick thing I do want to show is this carpet. My friend Liam showed me this and uh, it's a laser cut thing made specifically for your vehicle. I'll put a link for it. I can't remember the name of it, who makes it, but 
you know, it fits around the fuel neck filler and all that kind of stuff. And it's actually fitted to fit the ribs in the bed. So I'll show you real quick. I think I can see it on the back. So you can see that it's cut to, to be flush. So it fills in this gap and you don't feel these ribs when you're standing on the inside. Uh, another thing we have is this like kind of plug and play subwoofer. This van only has two speakers, one in each door. And you know, the sound system was lacking big time. So I uh, can't remember which one this is. It's an eight inch subwoofer. Honestly, sounds great. You know, nothing too too crazy, but we may end up having to remove that because I think one of the big things I want to do is a swivel seat on the inside. And I uh, just wouldn't be able to do that with that in there. All right, so here we are inside the van uh, where I'm standing right now, kind of by the fridge. You know, like you can see I've got standing room and it's actually taller back here over the bed. So I think the six, six feet and four inches is actually measured on that side, but I'm over six feet tall and I don't come close to hitting my head on anything, even with the fan and whatnot. So it's awesome. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell with this lens, but I mean, there's a lot of room and it's tall. I can stand up here and change, do whatever. It's awesome. So yeah, I just think this really transformed the van and I can get some internal, you know, dimensions. Wasatch Overland may have that on their website. I'm not entirely sure, but you know, it's big. Every person that has stepped in here has just been like, whoa. So, um, yeah, if you can find a van that's got one of these, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's 100% worth the cost. You know, this, this changes the game in the van because normally I would have to be cramped down like this trying to change with, you know, in mountain bike gear and stuff that sucks. So, you know, this is just awesome. And real quick, I think another thing I want to show are these curtains. These are just from Amazon, uh, nothing fancy, but they completely close off the front of the van, uh, gives us some privacy. And, you know, it's it in combination with, you know, the doors, you know, the magnetic ones we have back there, this thing gets pretty much completely blacked out. Uh, I'm very sensitive to that when I'm sleeping. I hate having a ton of light. So just, you know, simple things like this. Again, you know, it's not a crazy van life build it uh it's really just kind of all that you need uh and nothing else and i think another favorite thing this shelf i've seen sprinters and pro masters and stuff do have one of these i've never seen one this big i would have to measure it but i mean you know it's it's well over two feet almost three feet and this is your original roof. So it's nice and sturdy and big fan. We store a lot of stuff up there. And we've got the Max Air fan. Uh, it's one of the totally electric ones. I can't remember the exact model, all these model names on things. I just kind of forget, but you know, that works great. And that's actually just running off of, off of our PLB or Dometic PLB pack. So it's, it's been super easy, nothing, nothing hard there. And this is the Wasatch Overland lighting kit. And there's some cardboard here. Uh, I haven't scraped it off. It's uh, just stuck there from shipping from Wasatch. And so real quick, I want to talk about the bed. Uh, this is basically a queen size bed. It's a queen width and slightly less length. So we bought this trifold mattress and it actually happened to fit perfectly with just one of the pieces removed. I honestly like couldn't have planned it any better. And like I said, I'm just over six feet tall and I can sleep. Uh, I guess you'd call this east to west instead of north to south, but I sleep just fine. My feet do touch, but I often sleep on my side, so I really don't find it to be an issue, but I also sleep on my back. So I'm totally comfortable this way. And one of the things we were thinking about, you know, if we do insulate and put walls, that may take like two inches, you know, if not more, um, you know, away from our sleeping length. And 
that might be a little tough. So that's one reason why we've kind of been waiting. And we just haven't had a situation where we were like, we absolutely have to insulate this thing. You know, we've been camping down to about, I don't know, 30, 31 degrees. Yeah, it's cold, but you know, we have a Mr. Heater buddy that we run in here and I actually do have a diesel heater that I haven't installed. So, you know, once we get that, I, I just, I don't know. We'll see. We do plan on doing some, some wood paneling and some insulation. It just hasn't been a priority for us. And I would be remiss not to talk about this. So this is the Aeronaut Hover Quilt. And if you haven't heard of this, it's a game changer. I've had it, I don't know, a couple of years now since they launched. And the whole idea with the hover quilt is it's basically supposed to be comfortable. And I repeat, comfortable down to 30 degrees. So it's like, you know, the warmth of a mummy bag, but it's a big down quilt. You can sleep two people under it. And it's honestly insane. Like I've had friends that were like, Oh, it's so expensive. It's just, you know, it's a quilt, but until you try one, you won't believe it. So this is really all we need. We've got this and we do have another comforter under here just in case, but we kind of sleep on top of that most of the time. But so again, we have a trifold mattress along with another three inch gel phone topper. So we have a six or seven inch total mattress and it's queen size width. It's amazing. Uh, we love it. So, you know, for camping, it's hard to even call this camping, to be honest. So it's very simple. It's just some two by fours and plywood that we bolted in. It's, uh, you know, I'm not super proud of this, but hey, it works. There's literally no issue. So until we have a problem... We're probably going to leave it like this. And so let's talk storage up here. Um, again, everything underneath the bed is storage. And if you haven't figured it out yet, I obviously love snakes and I do snake, snake relocations. So I have my trusty five gallon bucket with screw on top snake hook because I'm constantly on call to do rattlesnake relocations. So that stays there in here. We have a, foldable toilet along with you know supplies for that that kind of stuff and then over here there's more bedding stuff towels just kind of other random stuff and then next to that is our Dometic water jug and water pump which this thing is pretty trick like we were thinking if we were to put a sink in here we would honestly just use this because it's an insulated water jug I think it holds four gallons three gallons and it has this quick disconnect up here so you can quickly unplug this which is the water pump which is powered by uh you know a battery and you can just charge it with usb-c so right here is perfect because i can fill up pots of water i can fill up water bottles if i'm riding and it doesn't go anywhere you know there's it literally can't go anywhere and so it looks kind of crude i know people are like Ugh, it's it's not all you know perfect and you can't hide everything, but I just, I don't know. We don't need that. So that's why I keep saying this is a budget build. All right. So let's kind of talk about the front, uh, standard, you know, updated Econoline interior. I do have an Atoto F7 head unit, and this is the Linux based one and it has CarPlay. So when you plug the phone in, CarPlay works amazing. And then here is the six switch S pod. Um, and that controls all the lights and stuff. So that's all pretty standard. We keep a Kelty box right here. Uh, it's very easy to grab this whole thing out. And in here is some quick cooking supplies and coffee making stuff. So if we're on the road and want to make a cup of coffee, tea, or make a sandwich, that kind of thing, there's a jet boil in our coffee stuff. That way we don't have to stop and pull out everything out of the back and get the stove out and whatnot. In here is like random chargers, cables, camp, camp gear, headlamps, that kind of thing. And this little guy is our Dometic PLB. And that's running our Dometic 75 fridge 
and our lights and our fan. Um, and I wired up to the S pod, a switch to charge this from the alternator. And we can also charge it with the solar panel that I showed earlier. And on that note, here's the CFX 75. It's a dual zone. So it's a fridge and freezer, or you can just make it, you know, a fridge or freezer, whatever. And I do have a Rocky mounts, uh, fork mount down there. So if I want to carry bikes inside, I can. And we've got a scan gauge, you know, that helps kind of monitor alternator levels, miles per gallon, RPM, uh, transmission temp and coolant temp, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that's a good little thing to have if, uh, you don't have anything like that. All right, so that was the walk around. Uh, I tried to do my best to kind of cover everything. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, leave a comment. I'd love to hear it. And I do plan on updating this. And once we kind of build it out more, uh, the first thing that's gonna have to happen is the electrical system. And I've said it before, but I've got another video on that. I have an entirely new electrical system that needs to go in here. And that's the first order of business. And then from there, we're going to start thinking about the inside and kind of what we want to do. But again, you know, we don't want to weigh it down too much and we want to keep it pretty simple because well, ultimately we're pretty simple people and don't need a whole lot. So that's why I kept saying this is a budget build. And I think a lot of people might get mad in the comments, say it's not a budget build. You spent four grand on the lift and six grand on the top, but I'm trying to compare it to other vans that you might buy. Like I said, sprinters and whatnot, which are significantly more money. So no hate on those vans. I'm not, I think a lot of people kind of think, you know, I'm making fun of them and I'm not, I think they're awesome vans, but I also think the Econoline is a perfect platform for someone to start with. And somebody that maybe enjoys off-roading a bit more than just like the van life stuff, you know, they want to get a little further out. They want to get a little bit more remote and a two wheel drive Econoline can totally do that if you do some modifications to it. And I think it's just been a really good mix. So I appreciate you guys watching and I do want to just kind of show one quick thing. I've got my new shirts and I'm going to have them on my website. So check out my bio or go to iBreakForSnakes.com. And if you want to kind of show your support, uh, that'd be awesome. And a lot of people kind of ask me what's up with the snake thing. And basically I just love snakes. Um, I do a lot of rattlesnake relocations and try to do a lot of outreach and education. I think snakes are vitally important to their ecosystems and I think people need to respect them and, you know, don't kill them, leave them alone. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.